Salvete Discipoli. Today we're on chapter 27, a very important chapter, because it covers the last tenses, the future tense and the future perfect tense. You will definitely see the future tense on your national Latin exam uh, in March. So, second week of March, in fact. The future tense. We've already had the present tense. I love, I do love, I am loving. We've had the imperfect tense. I was loving. I used to love. I kept loving. The perfect tense we've had. I have loved. I did love. The pluperfect tense we've had. I had loved. Now we're going to get our last two tenses. There are six tenses in all. We're going to take the future tense, which is explained in your book on page 135. And we're going to take the future perfect tense, which is explained in your book on page 136. And there, of course, are charts. What would Latin be without charts? There are charts of all the tenses with all conjugations in the back of the book. OK? In the grammar section of the back of the book. The future tense, I will. I will love. OK, we have to be careful of the future tense. Because just like adjectives are two types, where you have a first and second declension adjective and a third declension adjective, you have two ways of forming the future tense in Latin. And they do it by means of conjugation. The first and second conjugations do it one way. Let me just abbreviate here. Conju that is conjugation. And then the third and fourth conjugations do it another way. And you will see this on your national Latin exam, as I said. So you have to know both. In English, we just say, I will love, I shall love. But in, in uh, Latin, we have two different ways, depending on the conjugation. So you have to be aware of your conjugations. How do you tell the conjugation of a noun, or excuse me, of a verb? You tell it by the infinitive. If I have rego, regere, rexi, Rectus. How did I know that, by the way? I memorized it. When I was in Latin 1, I memorized the principal parts of the verbs that I needed to know. So we go to the second principal part for any verb in Latin to find out what conjugation. If there is a short E here, then it's third conjugation. If there's an A there, it's first. If there's a long E with a make run over it, then it is second. If there's an I there, it is the fourth. So just a quick review. How do you know the conjugation of a verb? And you can see that it's very important that you know this. Well, let's keep this up here, and let's, let's focus on the third and fourth conjugation to begin with. There's no special order. You're going to have to know them both anyway. How do I say I will rule? You will rule. He will rule. It's just changing a vowel. That's all it is. You take reg, the stem, of the third or fourth conjugation verb. And I'm going to, verbs come in six packs here. Okay, I've got first person, second person, third person, singular, and this is plural over here. Singular, plural. Now, what are my endings going to be? Be careful here. A M E S E T. E M U S E T I S and E N T. Regam, reges, reget. Regemus, regetis, regent. I will rule, you will rule, he will rule, we will rule, y'all will rule, they will rule. And this, the same thing for the fourth conjugation, only you're going to have an I here. If this were audio, it would be audiam, audies, audiet, audiemus, audietis, audient. Okay, and you can see this all on page 135 at the bottom there. You can see, in fact, they use rego there. Regam, reges, reget, regemus, regetis, regent. Okay, and they have copio there, and they have audio, for example. So the third and fourth conjugation simply use the E as the sign of the future. So the E is the sign of the future for the third and fourth conjugation. Because ordinarily, you'd have an I in here if this were present. If I say I rule, it's going to be rego, then regus, regit. But I will rule, regam, reges, reget. Regamus, regatis, regent. They will rule. So that's how you do the future tense of a third and fourth conjugation verb. Be careful now, because the first and second conjugation do it entirely differently. Let's, let's use another verb, a verb coming from here. Let's go back to our old friend, amo. 
Again, amo, amare. I always start with my principal parts. Amawi and amatum. We have principal parts in English, too. Sing, sang, sung, drink, drank, drunk. We have three principal parts in English. Latin has four. We haven't found a use for this one yet, but we will. Hang in there. Okay, again, I need my stem. How do I get my stem? By cutting off the RE, and any verb will have an RE here, unless it's highly irregular, like the verb to be, or the verb to bring, carry, or to, to not want, to want, nolo, and wolo. Anyway, I take ama, and I write it out six times, just like I did over there with reg. Here's my first, second, and third person, singular and plural. And it ends up as a six pack. Okay, what do I put on the end here? Let me do it, get a little more fancy and use some blue here. B O B O B I S B I T. You need to memorize these folks. B I M U S B I T I S and B U N T. The, what you see in blue there, B O B I S B I T, B I M U S B I T I S B U N T, are the future endings for any first and second conjugation verb. Let me move out of the way. What you see in blue here are the future endings for any first and second conjugation verb. Bo, bis, bit, bemus, betis, bunt. I will love, you will love, he will love. We will love, y'all will love, they will love. Okay, let's take a second conjugation. Monio, I warn. Monebo, I will warn. Monebus, monebit. Monebimus, monebitis, monebunt. They will sit, say day bunt. They will hear, audient. They will run, current, current. Has to end in ENT over here. Okay, that's a third, conjug uh, third conjugation verb. So does everyone see this? This is how the future tense is put together. Again, this is an explanatory lesson. This is not a full lesson. Your full lesson with exercises and testing and all that comes on your online course. This is just in addition to help you understand what you didn't understand directly from the book or what was online. Let me use my eraser now and move to the last tense. We're going to do the future perfect. So let me erase the future. And we know the word perfect in Latin means completed. And that's why you use that word perfect when you're talking about verbs. It doesn't mean that one verb's better than the other. Perfect means complete. Imperfect means incomplete. So we're talking now about the future perfect tense. So let me erase that to put, uh, to put that in. Perfect. So this is completed in the future. You don't see, hear this used a lot in English much anymore. It used to be. But it's sort of dropping out of English usage. And the translation that we use is I will have or shall have, depending on how your English teacher wants to explain that. I will have loved. Let's stick with our old friend Amal. I will have loved. So a completed action in the future. Uh, by this time next week, I will have completed the entire book. I will have completed. An action completed in the future. Now, how does this, so I will have loved, you will have loved, he will have loved. The Romans do use this tense, even though we don't use it much in English, they certainly use it a lot in Latin. And this is, this is it, folks. Uh, there are no more tenses to learn after this. In fact, when you finish Latin 2, you are ready to read anything the Romans have written about themselves in Latin 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Okay, how do we, first of all, we go to our principal parts. Let's go amo, amare. That's why they spent all those lessons uh, chapter 17, chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 20, chapter 21, telling you about these uh, perfect stems. And, uh, and they get them from the principal parts. I'm writing the perfect stem right now. Amawi and Amatu, my old supine friend here. Okay. For this, since this is a perfect tense, I need a perfect stem. And how do you get the perfect stem? You go to the third principal part, cut off the I, and you have AMAV here. So I'm going to write out A-M-A-V six times. Here's my first person singular, second person singular, third person singular, first person plural, second person plural, and third person plural. Okay, 
I'm going to put my black marker away now and get out my blue because I need to put endings on here. If you, if you know anything about Latin up to this point, Latin is stems and endings. Stems and endings. Here's our stem, what's our ending? And I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to say next, these endings have to be memorized, just like you have to memorize bo, bis, bit, bemis, bitis, bunt, for the future of the first and second conjugations, or bom, bas, bot, bomus, bodis, bont, for the imperfect of all conjugations, same thing here. So I'm going to put the future of the verb to be, ero, eris, erit, erimus, eritis, and errant. And the reason we're going to put errant there is so we don't mix it up with the third person plural of the perfect tense, which it would have the same spelling if it didn't. So this is all explained to you in the middle of page 136 there. You can see all of the, well, not all of the forms. For all of the forms, you can go to the back of the book and look at your chart here. See exactly what page it's on. Here they give all of the all of the principal parts of your conjugations there. Here's the regular verbs. And of course, here's what I'm talking about here. Here's the chart that's on page 157. Uh, as of today, you should be familiar with every single form on page 157 because we've had every tense. So on 157, they have all the active forms of the verb. Uh, in a few lessons, we'll get into the passive forms of the verb. And then uh, the passive forms are on page 158. Irregular verbs, which I talked about a few chapters ago uh, with Pharaoh, remember, page 159, everything you need to know. And there's the future of the verb uh, to be there, ero, eris, erit. It's right in the middle of page 159, and they use that as an ending. Much the same way as they use the imperfect of the verb to be, eram, eras, erat, as the ending for the pluperfect tense. So actually, if you're familiar with the verb to be, the tenses of the verb to be, then you already know these endings. So it just makes it that much easier. So this is the future. In fact, I don't think I mentioned this uh, earlier when I talked about the future tense. Uh, ero, uh, the verb to be, sum esse fui futurum. This is the future. Ero eris erit, erimus eritus erit. So there you are. I will, he will have loved, we will have loved, y'all will have loved, they will have loved. Amawero, amaweris, amawerit, amawerimus, amaweritus, amawerint. And again, remember this I here is important. If you put a U there, it's not only going to be wrong, but it can be misinterpreted as a third person plural perfect tense because it would be the same spelling if you had a U in there. And that's where the Romans keep an I. That's just a little thing to remember there. All right, and uh, all conjugations do this. There's no first and second do it one way and third and fourth do it another. All four conjugations, if this were audio, it would be the same thing. Audiwero, audiweris, audiwerit, audiwerimus, audiweritus, audiwerit. I would take the third principal part of any verb and cut off the I and then add these endings to it, what you see in blue. And that takes care of all the tenses. Present, imperfect, future, perfect, pluperfect, future perfect in that order. That's the traditional order of the tenses. Okay, and you will see the future tense, not the future perfect, but you will see the future tense uh, as, a, as a test item on the National Latin Exam the second week in March. I'm warning you, you will see this. And you will see it also in the paragraph, the, the, the selected reading on the National Latin Exam at the bottom of the page, whatever little animal story they pick, they will use future tenses in there and uh, they, you'll, be, you'll be asked, you know, is this... Uh, is this future or not? They can ask a, a, a grammar question in that uh, paragraph. All right, discipuli. Multis gratis vobis ago. Salvete discipuli, important day today because we're going to be talking again about relative clauses. This is a common feature in English grammar and a very common feature in Latin grammar, the relative clause. Remember the last time I told you that any present participle could be changed into a relative clause? The leave, the falling leave, the leaf which falls. The relative clause is a dependent clause. So let's just put an example up here. The woman, we'll do one in English, that is an M. The woman whom he saw ran across 
the street. Okay, let's just look at this as English grammar for right now. And let me switch to my blue pen. Woman here is the subject of the main clause. The woman ran across the street. This is your main clause. The woman ran across the street. This is your dependent relative clause here introduced by a relative pronoun. Again, I'm not talking Latin, I'm talking English, but fortunately, the grammar for English is the same as Latin. How is that? Because the Romans modeled our grammar for us. That's why, the, that's why your English improves as you take Latin. Okay, so here's your main clause. The woman ran across the street. No problem. I can just simply put femina. It's nominative. It's the subject of the sentence. What did she do? She ran. So that word ran is from curro. So kukurit would be the perfect. She ran. Trans. There's our prepositional phrase, trans. And trans takes what? The accusative or the ablative? It has to take one or the other. It takes accusative. How did I know that? I memorized it with my flashcards. Okay, street, we um. The word for street or row. So there's, there's the main thing, uh, the main clause there. It, uh, and a clause, uh, uh, the, the uh, dependent or independent clause is also a sentence, a complete thought. Femina, cocoda, trans, we um. Of course, the word order could be different. I could have, uh, Romans would probably put this at the end of the sentence. They don't have to. This could be Latin word order. But they probably would put this at the end, most likely. Whom he saw. This is what this chapter, and this chapter is chapter 28, and it talks about all the forms of the relative, all, I mean all the forms, on page 137. <coughs> Excuse me. Ignosce mihi. All right. How do we, what do we call this? This is our relative clause. It's called a relative clause because it begins with a relative pronoun. What's the relative pronoun in Latin? Qui, quae, and quad. Relative pronoun. Qui, quae, quad. Masculine, feminine, and neuter. And you know what I'm going to say next. You must memorize these forms. Actually, we've had these forms before. But the book hasn't insisted that we know the rest of the declension. And the whole declension is right there on page 137. Qui, uh, quae, quad. Cuius, cuius, cuius. Cui, cui, cui. Quem, quam, quad. Quo, qua, quo. Then qui, quae, quae. Quorum, quorum, quorum. Quibus, quibus, quibus. Quos, quas, qua, uh, quae. And quibus, quibus, quibus in the plural. How did I know those just now? Because I memorized them when I was in Latin 1. Okay, so there you are. Uh, the important thing, other than the forms, which you need to use your memory techniques to learn, like I say, I write them out. I like charts. I'll take a blank chart and just keep writing them in, in order, until I get it right. Just like on a bingo card. That works for me. Now, you may want to say them. You may want to do something else. I'll use some kind of acronym to remember them. That's how I do it. I write it out on a chart. I have a blank, series of blank charts and I just keep writing it out and it, it just sticks in eventually. And of course you have to use it. And you use it with your translations. All, everything we're learning in Latin and all these chapters, you have to use it. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. And you take it gradually. We don't teach all this the first week. Learning something too fast won't last. Too much too fast won't last. Okay, what are we going to do with this relative clause in, uh, in Latin? First of all, this is not the subject of the sentence. This whom is the direct object of this verb, whom he saw. He is the subject of this clause. There's the verb, subject, verb, direct object. So we need to come up with a rule, and I've mentioned this rule before. A relative pronoun, like whom, agrees with its antecedent. Woman here is the antecedent. Its antecedent is simply a fancy word that means that it falls in front of the relative pronoun. Falls in, to fall. That's what sedent means. Okay? So it comes before. Ante before. Ante post. Before and after. You had that on your final exam for Latin 1. Or event 68, I think. With opposites. Antonyms. So antecedent means it comes before. So woman is the antecedent. So a relative pronoun agrees with its antecedent in number and gender. So if this is feminine, this is feminine. If this is singular, this is singular. That's what I mean by agrees in number and gender. But 
its case is dependent on its use in its own clause. So what's the case of whom here? It's accusative case because it's the direct object of saw. So this is going to be, this is going to be not, oh, excuse me, it's going to be accusative case because it's the direct object of saw. It's going to be feminine because its antecedent is feminine. And it's going to be singular because its antecedent is singular. So what is this going to look like in Latin? Okay, this clause here. This is going to be, has to be accusative singular. So it's going to be quam. And he, we can just put um, is in here as a word for he. You don't have to put is in there. You just put, leave it out. And saw weed it. Okay? That's the perfect tense of the verb weed it. Weed it. Weed it. So the woman whom he saw ran across the street, and I can put, um, I can put, take this here, quam is weed it, and put it right in here, right above this caret, quam is weed it, as our dependent relative clause there. Okay? And that's really all there is to the relative pronoun. Again, it's the same grammar as in English. If you never understood this in English, then you do today. You understand it for Latin, French, Spanish, all Indo-European languages just treat the relative pronoun the same way. Okay? Discipoli, multis gratis, vobis ago.